Hi, my name is Lorraine Watry and welcome to my studio. I am a watercolor artist and I've worked with watercolor for 26 years now and I thought I would start a new series of videos where I go over different tips, tricks and techniques for working with watercolor and hopefully these short videos will help you in your journey and if you have a question or a technique that you would like to see please comment below and I will try to accommodate that in a future video. In today's tip and trick video, I am going to go over the watercolor by Daniel Smith that is Thalo Blue Turquoise. And I realized after I had recorded the video that somehow my sound was not on. So I am voicing over this. And here is the tube of Daniel Smith Thalo Blue Turquoise. And I had uh, received this about a year ago and was going to test it out and then forgot about it, got busy with some things. And uh, then I was cleaning out my email today and saw um, an email back and forth with Daniel Smith and uh, as thanking them for sending out the tube and just uh, realized I had never done anything with it. So I am going over uh, the, uh, specifically the Thalo Blue Turquoise, and I will be comparing it with some of the other uh, turquoise blues that I have on my palette. So the Thalo Blue Turquoise is a Series 2, which means it's uh, not the cheapest uh, watercolor. It is the second uh, level up in pricing, and then uh, I think the prices go up to level maybe 4 possibly five in pricing range. It is a non-staining color. It is uh, transparent and it is non-granular and it is a single pigment. And then when you are looking for the uh, Thalo Blue Turquoise, if you go look up the information on the Daniel Smith website, just make sure that you look for Thalo with blue in the center turquoise. And if you look uh, just for Thalo Turquoise, that will bring up a different color. So I am swatching out the Thalo uh, Blue Turquoise first and just wanted to kind of bring it out and see the uh, color on my paper and just trying to get a, a darker section right there. And it is a uh, greener turquoise than even Thalo Blue Green Shade. And then I'm using a little bit of uh, the lighter turquoise and I'm going to add some water to it. And because it is non-granular, this might be a really nice color in a sky. And toward the end of the video, I'm going to do a quick sky on a bigger piece of slightly bigger piece of paper so that you can see what that looks like. And I believe I was just talking about the non-granulating aspect of the paint. And a little bit later on, I will also, once uh, the turquoise colors, the first two are dry, I will go back and lift uh, some in that area so that you can see how uh, much staining or non-staining the color will leave on the paper. And now I'm going to compare it to uh, some of the other turquoise colors that I have on my palette. And first I pull out the Thalo Blue Green Shade. And I don't use uh, Thalo Blue in a whole lot of paintings, partly because it's very staining. Um, but I do have uh, Thalo Blue because there are certain mixes that I can make with it that I really like. And you can already see that the Thalo Blue Green Shade is bluer than the Thalo Blue Turquoise. And then I'll just do the same thing where I add a little water to the pigment so that I can show what it looks like as a lighter value. Oh, at first, before I did that, I went ahead and used the Thalo Blue Red Shade in a swatch next to the, the Thalo Green Shade, and uh, it is even a little more blue. And I don't have the Thalo Blue Red Shade on my palette. It's just not. I, I actually can make something very similar to that 
using um, what? Oh, I will use either cerulean or uh, manganese, and I can put some either cobalt or ultramarine into that uh, turquoisey blue and get a similar look um, thalo blue red shade. And you could also use the thalo blue green shade and add a touch of cobalt or ultramarine to it, and that might get you a similar color. I have not actually tried that. And now I'm just going back and using a thinner version of the thalo blue green shade and lightening it at the bottom. Thalo blue uh, green shade and red shade are both uh, non-granulating. They are transparent and they are uh, staining level four. So that means they are harder to remove from the paper if you want to lift uh, some of that color back off. And uh, they are light, fat, light fastness one like the Thalo Blue Turquoise. And I believe blo both the Thalo Blue and Green Shade and Red Shade are uh, PB15. Thalo Blue Turquoise is uh, PB16. And I'm just showing that on the side of the Daniel Smith tube, you can find the light fast rating and what series they are. And then on the opposite side, so light fastness and series. And for the thalo blue red shade, that is a series one pigment. And then on the opposite side, it will show you the pigment that's in there. And so that should be a uh, blue. Oh, I was looking for my tube right quick, but I don't see it. Uh, it is the thalo blue and I believe it's PB 15, maybe colon six. And so when you're looking at a number like that, the P stands for pigment, the B would be blue in this case, but you might also see R for red, Y for yellow. And I have some other videos that talk about um, that kind of thing and looking at the tubes for more information. And not every brand of watercolor has that exact information on it. And um, I'm going to pull out the chart from Daniel Smith. And most brands of watercolor will have a chart and they don't all have the same amount of information again. But um, I was showing, looking at the information under the uh, thalo blue green shade and thalo blue red shade. And I think this is an older chart because I didn't have uh, the thalo blue turquoise listed on this chart. And if you uh, would like a chart, I believe you can just go on the Daniel Smith website and see if you can find one there. Um, sometimes some of your local art stores, you can purchase one that way. Um, I have also typed in Daniel Smith watercolor chart and uh, downloaded a PDF with the chart on it. So you could try that as well. So just comparing the three right now, they do have some different look to the pigment itself. And uh, I'm really liking the thalo blue turquoise and the look of it. And then I'm going to pull out some of my other turquoise colors. And so these will be sort of laid out in uh, the order that they would fall as they go from bluer to greener. And I will put the, the thalo blue turquoise in that, um, that layout. And so the order of all of these is a slightly off. I should have actually started, if I was going to lay this all out correctly, I should have started with the thalo blue red shade on the far left, then the thalo blue green shade, and then probably the manganese, which is what I am putting on right now. And manganese is a granulating color, and it won't go as dark as some of the other colors. Uh, manganese is... Um, granulating. It is a um, staining value of three and it is a series two. It is transparent and its number is PB15. The next color that I'm laying down there is a little darker than manganese. 
um, but it is more neutral, and that is cerulean. And I've been using more cerulean lately than the manganese. Um, they are both granulating, and cerulean is a number two in staining, so it's not very staining at all, but it is uh, semi-transparent, so it's um, not quite transparent, and it is a series one, and the next color is the thalo blue turquoise, again, and so I would, if I were laying it out in line, I would lay that one down next, and there are probably many more colors between the ones that I have on my palette uh, that could lay in different locations on this chart, but I'm just going with the ones that I have that are the turquoise colors. So you might have things like Prussian. Um, I'm trying to think of what else there might be. Indian Throne, maybe. I'm not sure where Indian Throne lays in this. I don't use Indian Throne. And then the next one I had, and that was on a side palette that I had laying there. That's Cobalt Teal. And uh, I, since I don't have that one on my palette, I don't have its qualities. But it is granular. I know that much. And it is definitely more um, green turquoise. And the next one is my ultramarine turquoise. And it is on my palette. And it is a series one. It is uh, number two in staining, so low staining. It is granular. It is transparent. And it is made up of two pigments. So far, the others are all made up of a single pigment. So I also have a peacock blue on my palette that is a Holbein pigment. And peacock blue is a, a two pigment paint. And I think first before I show the peacock, I'm uh, going to mix up, pull out some pigment and do some swatches showing what the phthalo blue turquoise looks like with new gamboge and then with the um, quinacridone rose that I pulled out. So this first one is the phthalo blue turquoise with the new gamboge, and I've got a little more of the turquoise in the mix to start with, and then I went back and put a little more new gamboge so I could see a variety of greens, and it does do um, some really nice greens and uh, some kind of olivey greens with the new gamboge. I have not tried it with my other yellows, yet, but I just wanted to try it with those two colors. And the second one is a little more of the blue in the mix and then more of the Quinn Rose in the mix with the Thalo Turquoise. And it does make a little bit of a muted uh, purple. It's not as vibrant because the Thalo Blue Turquoise is a little less vibrant than um, the peacock blue that I have. So I'm pulling out some of the peacock blue at this point, and I will make a swatch of that. And as I said, a phthalo blue, or I mean peacock blue, is a uh, two pigment color, and it's a uh, phthalo blue and a uh, phthalo green. And so I think you can see that it's a little more uh, vibrant turquoise color and it's a little bluer turquoise color. And so that will affect the mixes, uh, as well as the fact that it's got two pigments in it compared to the one pigment that Thalo Blue Turquoise has in it. When you mix um, several pigments together, then those pigments can start interacting in different ways. And so that can make a difference on how the mixes look. And so then I thought I would go ahead and show the difference between using peacock blue with those uh, two colors, the Quinn Rose first. So this is a little more of the blue in the mix. I actually think I had quite a bit of turquoise on my brush still. And then I added a little more of the rose to it.
And now I'm going back for some new gamboge and I will show that mix. And I will label this chart and place it at the end of the video so that you can see the different colors. And I'm just pointing out here that the mixes are slightly more neutral for the phthalo blue turquoise with the red and the yellow than they are with the peacock blue. And actually, probably the purple mix is a little more neutral, but the new gamboge mix is probably pretty similar. It's always hard to get exactly the same look because depending on how much of each color you have in the mix, that can change what it looks like as well. So I am going to dry uh, the colors to the my left swatch is those first two and then I'll be back. So I wanted to lift a little bit on the first two swatches because Thalo Blue Green Shade, the second swatch over, is a more staining color and Thalo Blue Turquoise is less staining. And so I pulled out my flat brush and it's a Royal Brand flat brush and they're usually available at craft stores and uh, art stores and online. And I use, I like the smaller flat brushes to lift with. So I'll use a little bit of water and then go up and see how easily it is to lift. And because that is my uh, softer flat brush, if I can lift back pretty easily with that, I will be happy with that. And it looks like it's coming off pretty well. And I think I went back another time just to see if I could get any more off and it came off pretty good. And then I went over to the Thalo Blue uh, Green Shade and because it is a staining color, it should not lift quite as far back. It will be a little harder to get some of that color to come off. And I am working on a Fabriano paper and I believe when I go back in a few seconds with my stiffer bristle to see if that's easier to lift with, it uh, actually pulled at the paper some, and when you do that, when you mar the surface of the paper a little bit, then color can sit down in that area and um, it can leave some of the color on there. So I think I'm learning something about the Fabriano paper as well. Uh, that is a newer surface for me to work on. For years now, I've worked on Arches watercolor paper, and I am contemplating switching over to Fabriano completely, but uh, just starting to use it more and more. So so right about in here, it starts to, when I'm lifting, it starts to basically move the color into the area that has been disturbed on the paper, and it is making it toned with some of that turquoise because the paper itself is, is now uh, kind of grabbing onto the color a little more. And so then I went back over to the Thalo Blue Turquoise to see what would happen if I used the stiffer bristle on that area as well. And that is a Dynasty Fabric Flat. I've talked about it in other videos. You can use any craft brush you want to be a stiffer bristled brush. I just found those at my lo local art store and liked them. So when I need a, a brush to lift a little more, that's usually what I reach for. And I am able to get a little more off on that one. I'm not quite having to scrub as hard, uh, but I do notice that the paper surface is a little uh, fuzzy now because of that brush and lifting. Now I'm going to do a quick sky using, uh, this is old arches paper that I had a painting on the other side and I just tear it down when I'm getting rid of an old painting and um, so I'm using clear water and going to wet the whole area and then I'll just use the Thalo Blue Turquoise and uh, leave some white for some clouds. 
And I am wanting just to see what it would look like if you were to use this paint uh, by itself in a sky, but you could mix with other colors. So it could have some cobalt in parts of the sky, or it could uh, have some sunset colors or sunrise colors in there as well. And because it is a uh, non-granulating color, then it uh, will give you a nice look without any uh, little granulation pieces in there. And I have painted with cobalt and cerulean and other colors that are granulating in skies for a long time now, and I don't mind the granulation, but for those that are not wanting that granulating look, uh, the Thalo Blue Turquoise is, is a good option. So I want the sky to be darker at the top, and then as I'm coming down, I want it to fade out as it goes toward the horizon so that it looks like there's atmosphere between the, the horizon and the viewer. And so I'm just adding a little water. And I think I just kept putting too much water on my brush because I was losing some of the color. So I added a touch more at the bottom. And I was real happy with the uh, look of that blue and the sky. And I did, uh, I will post this, it'll be in the image at the end as well. So you can see what it looks like once it, once it had dried. And I think it has a really nice um, kind of vibrant look to it once it's dry. And uh, I have pretty much determined that because I don't use manganese that much anymore, I may be taking the manganese off my palette and putting the phthalo blue turquoise on there. I have not really adjusted my turquoise pigments in a long time, so I will probably be doing that. Thanks for following along, and if you have a tip, trick, or technique video in watercolor that you would like to see, please leave a comment below, and I will get that on my list, and I hope you have a good day. Bye!